Greetings from Christian Medical College, Velo. At the outset, I'd like to thank Dr. Malay Sharma and his team at Aryavat Hospital for having invited me to deliver this talk titled, How I Do Cystogastrostomy. This shall be the outline of my talk. We'll be looking at mature pancreatic fluid collections, the initial management, drainage, free procedure considerations, the steps of cystogastrostomy, and the post-procedure management. Now, this slide is familiar to all of us who have read or seen about the Atlanta classification for pancreatic fluid collections, which are four in number, the acute the peripancreatic fluid collection, the acute necrotic collection, pancreatic pseudosis, and walled of necrosis. This division is based on whether the collection is less than four weeks or more than four weeks old, and whether the, there is underlying interstitial or necrotizing pancreatitis. Coming to the mature pancreatic fluid collection, pancreatic pseudosis is well encapsulated. It's an extra pancreatic fluid collection with minimal debris. Walled of necrosis can be either intra or extra pancreatic with a well-defined wall and has necrotic debris inside. The initial management of a mature pancreatic fluid collection consists of sometimes just observation and supportive care, which includes mesogenal feeding, proton pump inhibitors, and somatostatin receptor agonists. A study from Korea has shown that in 19 patients who had pseudocyst, 84% had a partial or a complete resolution after one year with just observation or rather doing nothing. A study from PGI showed that when they gave, when they had nasogestional feeding for walled of pancreatic necrosis, there was an 80% decrease in the symptom of abdominal pain. The indications for drainage of a mature pancreatic fluid collection include the following. A symptomatic cyst, a rapidly enlarging collection, systemic illness due to infected pseudosis not improving with medical management. The options of therapy include endoscopy, radiology, or other interventional radiology, a combination of these, and last but not the least, surgery. As far as endoscopic drainage is concerned, there is a need for a trained or an experienced endoscopist. There should be a mature collection as defined by a well-formed wall, a mostly liquid connection. The wall should be adherent to the stomach or duodenum. The size should be approximately six centimeters or more when we intervene. There should be availability of surgery surgery and interventional radiology backup. There are two endoscopic options for mature PFCs, transmural drainage or transpapillary drainage. Transmural drainage is the most common approach. It's EUS guided, can be done even when there isn't an endoscopically visible bulge, usually for those with complete disruption of the pancreatic duct. Multiple large caliber stents can be placed. In a transpapillary drainage, it is done for a symptomatic PFC, which is less than three centimeters, usually for those with communication to the PD. And a single PD stent can be placed. The patient preparation before we do endoscopic drainage includes including, uh, that includes even cystogastrostomy are the following. You do a pre-procedure imaging, usually an MRI, a T2 weighted one, with MRCP, which helps to characterize the lesion. It defines it better, talks more, it tells us more about the content, its relationship with adjoining structures. We have to discontinue anticoagulants and antiplatelets prior to the procedure as per the standard guidelines. The normal blood tests that are ordered for are hemoglobin, platelet count, INR, APTT, blood-borne virus screen. We do this procedure after an overnight fasting. There should be pre-procedural broad-spectrum prophylactic antibiotics. It is best done 
under general anesthesia. And it's better to use carbon dioxide for insufflation rather than air. EUS helps in the direct visualization and assessment of the target site. It helps to rule out alternate diagnosis, especially the pseudoaneurysms and the cystic neoplasm. In a pseudoaneurysm, we might see blood inside. There would be a vessel in close proximity which feeds it. In a cystic neoplasm, we look for features such as septations, mural nodule, uh, connection to a pancreatic duct, and others. EOS helps in assessing the distance between the collection and the bubble lumen, which should be less than one centimeter. It helps to detect interposed vessels, such as the gastric viruses. It helps to perform transmural drainage in the absence of a visible bulge, especially in the tail collections. It facilitates the exchange of various accessories directly under ultrasonic vision. And US helps us to plan the type of endotherapy, whether we are going to do a metal or a plastic stent, the number of plastic stents, the need for nasocystic catheter placement, and the need for endoscopic necrosecond. So what are the steps in US guided cystogastrostomy? The first is a puncture. We generally puncture using a 19 gauge FNA needle. It's very uh, useful for people who are less experienced to follow that method. Sometimes we can go using a 10 front cystotome where you apply the electrocautery directly. The entry should be as less tangential or more perpendicular as possible. We ask analysis for amylase, CEA, and culture, and we place a 035 guide wire. The second step would be track dilatation. Different centers have various accessories that they use in different combinations and different orders. This include biliary balloons, Sohendra biliary dilating catheters, cystotomes. There is a combination of guidance, US fluoroscopic, endoscopic, our method that we generally follow here in our center is to start off with a 19 gauge needle, followed up by a six front cystotome. Thereafter, a four millimeter biliary balloon is used. Further, we use a 10 French SBDC in which we place an additional 035 guide wire. Sometimes we might directly use a 10 French cystotome, which has actually needle cord tree. Uh, which is followed by the ring cautery, and in which we can directly put two guide wires. Two loops of each guide wire are placed. The third step is stent placement. It's US guided. Plastic stents when we use two seven friends, seven centimeter long uh, pigtail stents can be used. We mark at the midpoint of the stent. This is to prevent the deployment of the stent fully into the cyst. It's a very important and a very protective maneuver. When we use a lamps, the common one which we use, the lumen opposing metal stent is the Nagi stent, which is three centimeters long and 16 mm diameter. We place a pigtail stent through the lamps for fixation. And then there are uh, lamps such as the hot axios and hot stacks, in which there's a combination of both electrocautery and stent, both. Uh, things available in the same device. Sometimes additionally, we can do procedures such as placement of a nasocystic catheter for irrigation, uh, the various agents used are normal saline, hydrogen peroxide, sometimes antibiotics. Uh, additional procedures also include direct endoscopic necrosectomy, which is done at the index procedure or subsequently. Uh, people also do additional transmural tracts, the multiple gateway technique. An NG tube is placed in some, in some centers, which helps to aspirate the fluid that has been released. And an NG and an nasogenital tube is placed for feeding. Post procedure management includes uh, as much fluid should be aspirated and sucked out soon after the fluid starts accumulating and soon after the stent placement. Uh, after the anesthesia recovery, the head is propped up in position again to prevent aspiration. If it's a world of necrosis, we stop proton pump inhibitor so that the acid helps in the digestion of the necrosis. We give antibiotics for five days and thereafter discharge. 
the various instructions told the patient at the end, at the time of discharge, are to report if there's increase in abdominal pain, abdominal distension, fever, or GI bleed. The diet is in a graded manner, initially fluid, then semi-solid, and then solid. After four weeks, we repeat an MRI uh, with T2-weighted image and an MRCP prior to removal. This MRI helps us to understand how much of the cyst has resolved, and then also it helps us to know uh, how the pan pancreas and the pancreatic duct will now appear. I just want to play a case, which we did very recently. This is a young male with acute biliary pancreatitis sequelae in the form of the collection, which we see uh, in close proximity to the stomach. You can see how much of, how big this collection is extending down into the pelvis. And when we do an MRI, a T2-weighted image, we see that it's predominantly fluid with few debris seen. And so let me just play the video of the cystogastrostomy that was done. So there is the pseudocyst, which is being observed under EUS. A Doppler is put to see if there are any intervening vessels. The next step is to place the entry with a 19-gauge FNA needle and the placement of an O3-5 guide wire. This is followed by a placement of a six French cystotome, which helps to dilate the tract. This is followed by a 4 mm hurricane biliary balloon, again with the purpose of dilatation, which you can see in the fluoroscopic image. This is followed by the placement of a 10 French SPDC catheter and a second guide wire is put. And here we mark the pigtail right at the center. And the advantage, it prevents the deployment of stent inadvertently into the cyst. So that's the first stent being deployed, followed by the deployment of the second pigtail stent. And then there is repositioning happening. And there you can see how the fluid is leaking out into the stomach. And there is the picture of the two stents uh, in their final image at fluoroscopy. So let me just recap the procedure that we have just described. Mature pancreatic fluid collections need intervention when symptomatic. The endoscopic drainage can either be transmural or transpapillary. We need to image the collection prior to intervention. Best done using an MRI or even EUS on the day of the procedure. Transmural drainage is to be done under GA with carbon dioxide insufflation. It is done with under antibiotic cover, both pre and post procedure. We've just talked about the advantages and disadvantages of plastic stent versus lumen opposing metal stent. Endoscopic necrosectomy is possible when you use a lamps, and lamps has a larger diameter. The steps of drainage include puncture, tract dilatation, stent placement. And we do an MRI prior to stent removal after four weeks. So thank you all for this patient listening.